Guys, welcome to today's video where we're diving into a topic that's more than just a trend or an aesthetic choice. It's about protecting your engine with a bit of cheap insurance. This is such a misunderstood and misrepresented topic. I've seen too many posts on forums of people hydro locking their GX470's engine after racing it through a relatively small puddle. I have to cover this topic of why and when you need a snorkel on your Lexus GX470 or similar rig. I won't bore you with the details about the basics of snorkels. You already know they help conquer water crossings and minimize trail dust intake. The snorkel debate has turned into a discussion more about looks preferences and I'm here to tell you that's not the case at all. Let's be clear, it's not about aesthetics. Off-roaders in Australia who tackle some of the most remote terrain on earth don't even think about snorkels as a discussion, but as a given. That's because it's about safeguarding your engine and it's far more important than looking cool. So why do you really need a snorkel? It's not because your factory air intake system can't handle the job. In fact, the GX470 and other Toyota 120 platform vehicles like the FJ Cruiser and Forerunner actually have a pretty good air intake design when it's left in its factory configuration. So it's not an inherent flaw in the design that you need to overcome. It's about your choice of tire size and the effect that has on the factory air intake system. If you're upgrading to larger diameter tires, you probably will need to modify the factory installed air intake system which includes the all-important fender well liner that a lot of people dismiss as not a big deal to chop up. Well I'm here to tell you it is a big deal and here you'll see why. If you're swapping out for big beefy tires you'll quickly realize they don't fit without some chopping. The first things to go include parts of the plastic on the fender flares but that part of the fender flare is what attaches the fender well liner to the inside of the fender well. So you either have to lose the fender well liner, which is a bad idea, or come up with some sort of temporary measure like I did, where I just gorilla duct taped it, kind of how the factory did it, but of course, I can't do as good a job as Toyota engineers, so it's not airtight. So it's definitely not as good, and I still was risking my engine when I was running this design. This is where the snorkel comes in. When you modify your factory air intake system to fit those large diameter tires, you compromise its effectiveness in preventing dust and water intake and that's a big deal especially if you love diving through small puddles and and even if you drive in a heavily rainy environment if you don't have that factory installed fender well liner you're putting your engine at risk even just going through moderate sized puddles on road that's right even a small puddle on a rainy day without proper modification you're at risk especially if like I said you completely removed your fender well liner like many have not understanding that that's the only thing covering up that air intake scoop, that puddle could become a massive threat to your engine. Enter the snorkel. It's not just a stylish addition, but it's a solution to a potential problem. Installing the snorkel ensures that even when you've installed larger tires and modified the factory installed air intake system, which includes the fender well liner, that your engine stays protected from water and dust and even performs better than the factory installed air intake system when it comes to that protection. So when it comes to deciding whether or not to slap on a snorkel, forget about the aesthetics. It's about making the smart choice to safeguard your engine. So the decision comes down to this. Have you modified the factory air intake system, which includes the fender well liner? If you have, you may want to consider a snorkel. If you don't have to modify that, then the factory air intake system is actually pretty good. It really just comes down to these factors. So let's get into how to install a snorkel on your Lexus GX470. So for my snorkel, I went with just the regular eBay kit and a couple special tools including a four and a quarter inch hole saw and just a kit of nice drill bits to go into the fender. I didn't go too exact with those but rather size them kind of on the spot as you'll see when we install it. When you're installing it, I do recommend going a bit oversized so that you have some room to kind of shimmy it around, but obviously not too much. 
And here you can actually see what my fender well looked like with my sketchy tape together blocker for that air intake scoop. The air intake scoop is right there, you guys. So if you go through deep water and you splash through it, like I was saying before, you might ingest water into your engine. And that's what we're trying to prevent here. Now here is where your air box is. I'm just kind of showing you around. And there is where the vehicle takes in air from the fender well. So just go ahead and remove those 10 millimeter screws in the clips. And you're just going to remove this hose clamp to undo the air box from the engine air intake and undo this electrical connector from the MAF and go ahead and just remove these little clips that hold on the top of the air box. Those are pretty easy to remove. And of course, you're gonna see how simple it is to change out your air filter here as well. Just go ahead and remove the top piece and you can kind of just break the connection and then wiggle it off. And just uh, be careful of the wiring and move that top piece out of the way to the back. Then you see your air filter there and the bolts underneath there. So just go ahead and remove those and keep it there loosely. And then we're gonna go underneath the fender well. And of course, I already showed you this, how easy it is to get water in here and go ahead and just give yourself access for that. And here's all the hardware that comes with the kit. Again, this is just the generic kit. I didn't go with a branded unit because it's just a tube for air to go through, you guys. I'm test fitting all the studs here and getting an idea of how the template lines up with everything and how I want to mount it. So there's a lot of, you know, kind of just testing things out with this. It's still a pretty straightforward install. So now I'm cleaning the surface that we're going to be taping some painter's tape on. And then we're gonna go ahead and apply some painter's tape to protect the surface that we're not trying to cut. And I'm just lining up the template to go ahead and get an idea of where the cuts are gonna take place. And the first mounting of the template was a little bit too low as you'll see in a minute. So of course, don't follow this one, follow the one that we do later. I show you the gap to the top there. And now I'm just trying to get an idea of how this under fender tube fits up. And of course, marking out the holes. Again, once I test fit this with the four and a quarter inch hole saw, I discovered that it's kind of close to the fender flare for my comfort, as you'll see here. So as you see, the bottom of the hole saw is very close to the fender flare, and I wasn't sure if the snorkel was gonna fit there. So we decided to do a quick line trace around the hole saw just to make sure. And after we did that, yeah, we confirmed that it's a bit too close and decided to move the template up a little bit and draw new lines and make new markings. This is where the door seam lines up with the template. And this is after we move the template up about a quarter of an inch about a quarter inch gap on the top of the fender there. So I'm just kind of showing you how those measurements look in our final assembly here. This is actually where we ended up drilling the holes. And I have my dad here helping me out today. Uh, I was a bit scared to be drilling through my fender. He's got a steady hand as being a dentist for 30 years. So I figured I'd get his help in drilling these initial holes because man, it was intimidating for me to ruin a perfectly good fender. And as you can see, we moved the holes up about a quarter of an inch or maybe a little more just to help clear that fender flare and to make sure that the snorkel fit. And as you can see, that is much better. We have a lot more clearance. Okay like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre were. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> Yeah, 
this. Sure. A little easier there. Oh yeah, that's probably just good to get me started. All right, how balanced are we right now? Is it wobbly? That ain't good. That ain't good. <laughs> it so well. All right, now I'll see. <laughs> that is terrifying to me. No, no, I'm doing this. I know, one. you're gonna do it. I'm gonna put the hole in it. No, 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 you're just gonna go the whole way. I know you. I'm not. Oh man, that sucks. All right, let's see. <laughs> this fender's fighting us. It's like, I don't want to die. That's so sad. Uh, let's see if I wasn't nervous enough. Perfect. Oh man, I did it. So as you can see, we just kind of stepped up the width of the drill bits to fit the hole saw drill bit. Now we're trying to figure out how this pipe goes underneath. And of course we have to remove the stock air intake scoop before we do any of that. So all you do is after you've unbolted the bottom of the air box, you just kind of bring it out there. And that's, that's really where the engine takes in air from you guys. So definitely be careful going through water if you don't have a snorkel. And now I'm showing you the proper orientation of this pipe after doing some fitment. And you kinda, you can put the one kind of smooth 90 degree end that way. And then the end with the bulge uh, and the slight angle goes out where the snorkel does. Now we're just sanding down the hole and putting some rust preventative paint uh, in there after we smooth everything out. Then of course, we're starting with some small holes into the center of those markings. And just like we did with the hole saw, we are going to step up gradually the width of the drill bit so that we get the proper size holes for the studs that come with the kit. So here you see me test fitting those studs and drilling out a little more. And we did have to fine tune these holes a little bit, you guys. We had to slot them down just a so bit here. Studs are coming out right about there. So we need to just widen it out down here a little bit. And now we have the snorkel test fitted and it's looking just like I wanted it. Here is where the studs come out behind the fender. You can see that one way in the back. That one is a total pain, but you're gonna have to be patient. You're gonna have to use a washer and then a nut and then just do one kind of turn at a time to get those secured down. And then right here, you're gonna see me test fitting the snorkel head on just to get an idea of what it's gonna look like in the end. And I think it's looking really good. I can't wait to see how it turns out. All right, let's rip it out and paint it. So now we're just sanding down those, the stud holes and getting ready to paint those as well. And right here, I'm just showing you how the template lines up with everything and how we had to slightly notch out a little bit lower to fit the studs in. And I'm painting with a uh, rag here. Uh, I, you know, we didn't have any paint brushes on hand. Uh, that's okay. You just need to cover it with some kind of rust preventative measure. Now we're removing the painter's tape and take a look at what we've done to my poor, poor fender. This was heartbreaking, but here you can clearly see the kind of oblong uh, oval on the top ones, the top stud holes that we made there. It's only a slight modification and it's no big deal because we have washers backing it. Now we're just putting a little bit of Loctite 
and screwing the studs in, but not all the way, especially on the furthest back top one because we were having trouble getting it to go far enough into the fender well to fit the washer and nut over. So we left a little bit of extra length on that and relied on the Loctite to prevent it from backing out from the snorkel. And of course, once you have that tension from the nut pulling on it, it won't back itself out at all. This process does take a little while, uh, so I would highly recommend a ratcheting crescent wrench here with, with a ratcheting end there. I didn't have any on me at this time, so it did take a significant amount of time to do. Gosh, I'm so tired of filming. And yes, filming does get pretty tedious, so I really hope you guys enjoy these videos that I'm putting out for you. Definitely apologize for being so MIA recently. There has been a lot of life happening, so sorry about the last 100 or so days where I haven't posted a video. Uh, here you could just see me finishing up the tightening process of those nuts uh, and washers on the back of the studs. That's really all the hardware that it is. Now right here, I am trying a solution to mounting the top of the snorkel. There's no way I'm drilling and riveting into my A pillar. I've already ruined my fender. I don't need to ruin another perfectly good body component. So I am using some extreme outdoor heavy duty Velcro. I figure that since it's almost impossible to secure this, you know, fully with adhesives, that's fine. I would go with a heavy duty Velcro so that if and when it does unstick itself, it'll just stick itself right back on and it'll keep going on my merry way. So I'm gonna let you guys know how this solution ends up working out. In the meantime, I'm finishing up mounting and you can see that the under fender situation requires modification. So I just got a Sawzall and cut off just this much of the snorkel. This is the snorkel side. Need to fix it a little bit. All right, so I had to cut off a little bit of the snark, and I just did that with a sawzall because there was no way we were taking this thing back off. That actually worked out really well, just kind of angling the sawzall in there. And we got a pretty clean cut. Now we'll just deburr it and then keep going. And that's really the only modification I had to make. You hear about having to fine tune these things like forever. This only took me 30 seconds to do, so don't worry about it. Just, you know, if you want to follow my the model I'm showing you, uh, you can assume that you might need to trim one side or the other of those tubes. And here I'm just cutting down the rubber coupler there to slide all the way over this inside tube. That way I can slide it up and over the snorkel side that I just trimmed down, which would not have been possible if I didn't trim it. So now it fits over and then I just need to bring the coupler over the snorkel side. So that's what I'm pulling the rubber over so that it covers both sides uh, of the outlet. And we can get an airtight, watertight, dust tight seal and then just put some hose clamps just put over the hose it. Hose clamps on either side of these. And then we'll be solid. So that's what I'm doing here, just putting a one hose clamp on one side of the coupler and a hose clamp on the other side of the coupler to get a secure finish that I'm gonna show you right here. Now all we have to do is the exact same thing on the air box side. And we actually ended up putting this rubber coupler on the lower air box side instead. You'll see that works out a little bit better after removing this intake scoop. And while your lower air box is out, it makes sense to just clean it out a little bit.
So we are having some trouble fitting it on this way. Like I said before, that just means we had to put the rubber coupling onto the lower airbox side. So right now I'm pushing the coupler as far as I can onto the lower airbox side so that I can more easily fit it to the snorkel outlet. Then I'm sliding on the hose clamps and sliding that assembly down into place. And then tightening down those hose clamps to create a tight seal that nothing can get through. Then all you need to do is install the upper side of the airbox by sliding it into the hose clamp that you took out at the beginning, tightening that sucker down, and then plugging in the electrical connector for the metered air. And it's just as simple as that. Now put in your air filter and snap those all down. Now you just need to install the snorkel head and I'm doing it forward facing. A lot of people do it backward facing. Uh, I don't really think it matters much. I just prefer the look of the forward facing one. Now I'm reinstalling my wheel, torquing it down to spec and it's time to see how we did. I'm just checking to see if I have suction here, checking for any air leaks, seeing if I can feel anything. I actually reinstalled my sketchy fender wall liner thing to see how it held up. Checking for air leaks again, any vacuum leaks. This is all unmetered air, so it wouldn't cause any issues with the engine function. And that's it, you guys. I've installed a snorkel on my Lexus GX470. Get a load of how this thing looks. I absolutely love the look, even though, like I said, it's not the most important thing. Now I'm covering it with some UV protectant that kind of helps restore plastic black items and adding a mesh to the inlet here so that smaller items like little stones and trash or whatever can't get into it. I may do an upgraded snorkel head at some point just to make sure I get the maximal amount of dust cleared away. There are some really nice ones that you can put on top, but this works for my purposes perfectly in the meantime, and it's very, very cheap. It ended up being much more durable than I thought as well. Now I'm going through the car wash to make sure I do not have any water intrusion here. This is washing the underside so it'll get all up in the fender wells, all that good stuff for a solid test. And now to test the rain resistance with a full wash. I don't think the test gets much better than this, you guys. Now let's see if any water from that made it into my airbox. This was filmed right after getting that car wash. It's totally dry, so you don't have to worry about rain from the underside by splashing through puddles or rain from the top side by it getting into the intake. So guys, let me know what you thought about today's video, and if you need to get a snorkel on your Lexus GX470 or other similar rig, 
if you've modified it with your larger tires and had to do a bunch of chopping, all that good stuff, I recommend doing at least some sort of solution, such as a snorkel. They also have hidden snorkels that you could do. Whatever you need to do to make sure that you don't hydro lock your engine, I'm all for it. So that's all I have for today, you guys. We'll see you in the next video.